Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. We are filming at Hilltop Coffee and Kitchen in downtown LA at one of the many locations these gentlemen have mastermind. I have AJ Rolan, Yoni Hagos, founders, along with Issa Rae. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's, it's an honor for me to come to a location that's closed now. But when I walked in today at 1130 with my team to get set up to shoot content, I could feel the energy. I could feel the vibe. I could feel what I saw digitally. This is a storytelling podcast. This is a podcast where we teach the hospitality industry that your story matters mm -hmm. and what you guys are doing in the heart of Los Angeles, where you're from matters. Can you share a little bit about the vision of how, how did you two find each other? Who found who? <clears throat> Uh, we kind of found each other. Uh, I actually met Yoni uh, about 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, he was a bouncer at a really popular sports bar. Um, and we became friends. And I actually, you know, had the privilege of watching him, you know, really develop a passion for the restaurant industry, become a manager, become an assistant general manager, eventually becoming uh, a GM, opening the next location of that sports concept. And uh, we just stayed friends and, and uh in a very interesting turn of events, we were able to acquire that, that, that establishment. So that's kind of how we got in the restaurant business. What did you think of AJ when you met him? Uh, he drank a lot, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was, I was, uh, I was serving him. So yeah. And you were drinking <laughs> and I was drinking with yeah. him. Oh, fair yeah. enough. He's fair an, enough. He's an, he was the enabler. So can you guys, can you bring me to the mission statement? I, I mean, I know there's multiple mission statements, but I, I know that when you put something out into the world, it allows the creative people that you bring onto your team to have that vision. Can you tell me about what we have up here on the wall? Yeah, so I think, you know, for, for Hilltop was very mission driven and always intentional with the type of brand we wanted to build as we were thinking about what was next for us in our hospitality career, um, what we wanted to kind of expand on, um, you know, sports and, 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 uh, and drinking, we kind of evolved out of that. And we started <laughs> thinking about where we were spending a lot of our times. So we were, we were became dads and, um, you know, we, we started thinking about a lot of the spaces we were spending time in were coffee shops. And we thought that uh, we, we had the idea to open our first location in uh, South LA, which is an area where both of both of us grew up, an area that was um, spent a lot of our formative years, kind of made us who we are, um, and an area that is kind of long deserved, more just quality, sophisticated options. Um, and they just kind of come few and far between. There's a, there's a lot of fast food options there. There's some great uh, local establishments, but we, we thought we wanted to kind of bring everything into the, the current day and we thought of the idea for Hilltop. So you guys had the sports bar business, very successful. This is kind of version 2.0, as you yeah. said, becoming yeah. dads, going back to the roots, bring me into the creative process of, of brand building of, of the name Hilltop. Um, that's yeah. <laughs> well, the, the the to be honest, the the, the, the name the, the you name, got that one. Yeah, the, 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 the name actually came from uh, you know we, we thought we found this location, this very obscure, kind of a terrible location, honestly. I know all about. A, I know all, all about that. It's all in the back of a building. <laughs> and uh, one day, I was standing in the middle of the street, and I called Yoni. I was like, "You should call this cafe." What do you think of the name Hilltop? Because we we're literally standing on the top of a hill. And uh, so that's where the, the origin came from. But as we kind of thought more about what we wanted to represent, we knew we wanted to create a, a cafe or a coffee shop. We knew we wanted to bring quality ingredients to this community that has long deserved it. We knew we wanted to hire people from that le uh, that community uh, or do our best and, and um, you know, do our best to teach leadership and entrepreneurship through entry level employment. And then we when we and then most importantly, we wanted to create a space where our patrons can come and do coffee shop. Do we curse on here? Yeah, this is uh, entrepreneur. we wanted to we're create, entrepreneurs. We wanted to we, we wanted to create a place for people to come and do coffee shop shit, yeah. right? And it was uh, a lot of creativity, a lot of community organizing, a lot of things that kind of advance humanity who often start inside of a coffee shop. So when we were thinking about um, the space that we wanted to, to your point, like we wanted to create something that had this energy built into it, that had this vibe into it. Every step of the the process, every step of the product. Whether the patron wasn't it wasn't in their patron's face or not, it was something that we wanted to to bleed with every single choice that we made. So we thought about just this idea what Hilltop actually meant. It was just this thing that kind of connects us all as human beings. We're all climbing something. 
Yep. We all have goals. We all have obstacles that we need to overcome to achieve those goals. So we're all climbing our own hilltops. When you have a big vision, the execution part is the part where you go, because if you think about it, a coffee shop, that's an, that's an incredible business. Yeah. But you guys are in a coffee shop. You have phenomenal coffee, but you're a full-on restaurant. Yeah. You're a full-on gathering place. Yeah. Like you're a full-on hospitality brand. How do you go, how do you take that and actually execute it and go, well, are we just doing pastries? Are we doing a full-on incredible menu, like all the things that you guys offer? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, we approached it as a coffee shop. And um, I think a good a sign of a good uh, restaurant tour is really listening to your customers and adjusting from there. And that's exactly what we did. We we saw the P-Mix and we saw what people wanted. We saw what people were ordering and we decided to expand on that. And and the, to the to speak to the execution part, it's all about the team. Like we've been very fortunate to to attract amazing people to our team, and it shows in our experience. How do you attract? I mean, we can say attract people yeah. to the team, but how how does it actually? Happen? Just I think for us, we we do a lot of manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> you tell people what's going to yeah. go down. So it's uh, we talk about it. I mean, it's it's just having conversations and networking, and and knowing when you find the right people. Um, yeah, we're very we're very slow to hire, right? So we take our time. We make sure we have the right people, and every hire matters. Um, and making sure everyone uh, fits within the culture that we're trying to build. Um, and we've we're very intentional about how we do that, and it's it's definitely showed. Has there been any mistakes or For any sure. stories along the way of something that somebody that's listening to this could learn from going from? one coffee shop to the to the second coffee shop? I mean, the big thing for us is slow to hire, quick to fire. Once you know someone's not not going to work, it's time to move on because um, it's it's pretty obvious. And I think uh, I think you fight that sometimes just out of basic human nature, just wanting to try to make something fit when it doesn't. Um, but I think moving on from people quickly saves them and it also saves you. Um, so that's a that's something that we really try to enforce. Every business is a family business. Uh whether we like it or not, how do you incorporate your family values into your business? I, I think, you know, to Yoni's point, everything for us when building this brand has really been intentional. And a lot of it has come from our lived experience, both from growing up in the community that we launched this concept in, as well as, you know, um, the, the families that are a lot of our peers that we grew yep. up with that now have young families. And we wanted to kind of, we effectively wanted to create something for ourselves. We're filling a need for, we both now found a way to, to, to we both now live back in the community where we grew up. Uh, so we effectively, everything that we built, we're building for ourselves. It's, it kind of pass, passes our taste tests, both from a, from a product standpoint, but also from an experience standpoint. And I think, um, you know, the, the a big thing that's important for us, particularly in this day and age, is just kind of creating environments that are conducive for connection. Uh, there's so many different things that are, to your to your point earlier, when we were chatting before this, is there's so many things that compete for our attention. Yeah. And um, how do we give people a reprieve, even if it's for a moment, even if it's from one of our team members, you know, greeting them with a smile to delivering a quality uh, meal and a quality beverage. So everything is, is really through this lens of quality, uh, connection, and, you know, when we think about the impact that we make, the best type of impact you can't measure, right? It's, your, it's how do you make somebody feel? And there's no barometer for that. You just kind of go with it. What does giving back look like in an organization like yours? Um, in terms of internally, I think uh, we really try hard to hire from the communities that we're in um, and, and taking those people that might not have a lot of experience and training them up. Um, I think we're proud to say that every store manager that we have of all four of our locations right now is started off as a barista or a cook wow. and they're all they're all managers. We actually had a moment we have a, a weekly leadership call um, and we went around and because we were introducing everyone to the new a new employee and everyone everyone said what they did before said that they're the new manager and everyone's I've been here for three four years and it was just even now just it just kind of gives you goosebumps just thinking about it like we're actually living out this mission. We're actually living out, we're executing on what, what we wanted to do and it's, it's working. Slauson, tell, tell the story. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, it's a, it's a, another labor of love that's kind of rooted in attention, but it was actually an idea that was thought of inside of our, our, uh, our Hilltop Slauson location. 
Um, you know, it's a mission driven venture capital firm rooted in this idea of economic inclusion. So it's a natural progression of everything that we've done here at Hilltop, uh, except it's more, you know, whenever we talk about what it is that we do, we feed people yeah. in, the, in this, in this case, you know, we're feeding people literally it's our business model, uh, out of our old, uh, sports bar location. We launched, uh, a community event that we would host every month that would, um, where we bring our regulars and our friends together to feed people experiencing homelessness in our local community there and now this new venture we're able to feed people what was that Cat- what was that initiative called it's called hashtag lunchback and how many cities did this initiative it's, it's, spread it's, 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 it was amazing man it was something that we thought of that we started at the parlor and through social media it grew to over 150 cities all over the world what is it, <clears throat> it it's it's basically we it's kind of framed as this party with the purpose um and the whole idea not dissimilar from how we kind of promote and market our establishments is this idea of bringing people together from diverse backgrounds that otherwise may not necessarily be in a room and giving them something that they don't necessarily know that they need. We all have this innate um, feeling that we, you know, there's 170 religions in the world and you only have one thing in common and it's love thy neighbor and help your fellow man lift, lift other people up. So, um, you know, I'm proud to say that that's kind of become proud to say that that's kind of become uh core to the DNA of everything that we do. For, you two, when you think big picture and you think about we're here in downtown LA, we're tell me about this space before we go on. Yeah. Yeah. I think was this, this part of the master plan. Yeah. I mean, it's always, it's always been, uh, we want to, we want to take LA from Pasadena to Long Beach, right? From downtown to Santa Monica and really, uh, pepper in these hilltops. And fortunately, uh, our director of operations had a relationship with, the. Uh, with the landlord here and we were able to kind of seamlessly integrate into a space that was that's beautiful right and we got to put our fingerprint on it and i think i think it's i think people really appreciate what we've been able to do here yeah what else are you going to do here this is, uh, is going to be released uh, yeah. at a later time so you, <laughs> yeah. you can so, go ahead and break the news i'm sure the news we'll, we'll, we'll already have b-roll footage of what's happening um so i'm sure aj can talk more to the concept, but we have <laughs> we have a rooftop bar that we're going to be opening here, and you're going to get lost pretty soon. There? Yeah, we're going to yeah. get lost. Yeah, tell, tell us about what's going to go down. Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> first of all, to Yoni's point, having a, a hilltop on Hill Street, which is exactly where where we're located downtown, was kind of a no brainer. We had to yeah. do it, and um, so yeah, we we had a great opportunity to to open a rooftop bar concept here, partnered with uh, with the folks that we were you know um, that that are the owners of the building, great folks, and then had this idea to. Um, effectively take everything that we had done all everything is a natural progression of everything that we did before so um our our sports bar was kind of the the local staple it was an institution it was open for 12 years and it was in west hollywood which is a very fickle market so it was (laughs) it was um so this is more this is just an amazing opportunity to be able to to kind of juxtapose the urban environment sorry Uh, juxtapose the urban environment that we're in in downtown with something that's really floral and plant driven and something that helps people. We we always say during the week, you can find your hilltop downstairs and on nights and weekends, you can get lost. You can come here before a Laker game. Exactly. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, how did Issa come into the, Issa Ray? how did she come into the picture? Uh, that was a funny story, actually. <laughs> right before we opened up our Slauson location, uh, her show, Insecure, had a, a storyline around this block party that she was going to throw. And it was the day before we did our friends and family opening. And I looked at him, I'm like, that block party's going to be in this parking lot. It is kind of a throwaway comment, but to his point earlier, around we're 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 some, building in public. We're some manifestors. Put your, inte- put your intentions out And then, out um, there. you know, uh, we were able. We were fortunate enough to be really well received by the community out of the gate. Um, you know, people felt the intention that we were putting into the brand, and uh, we had a bunch of mutual friends uh, with, with with her. She grew up in the same same neighborhood, still lived in the same neighborhood, and um, you know, we were able to to link up, get to know each other, share a little bit about what we were doing with Hilltop. And we kind of asked her like, what would you be doing if you weren't taking over Hollywood? And her whole thing was like, (laughs) I was, I was, I thought of, I I spent a lot of time in coffee shops. Um, You know, if this thing didn't work out, I'd probably have to work at a coffee shop. (laughs) And then I'm like, well, then, then, um, you know, she just had a, had a innate love for just coffee shops and the space and the creativity that they kind of bred. And it was such an easy conversation to have. We're like, we'd love to have you in the huddle. Uh, this makes so much sense. We can't think of anybody that's more aligned. Uh, and that was five years ago. What kind of advice, because partnerships with somebody that is as high profile as she is, yeah, they, most of the time they might not work. Yeah. What kind of advice do you have to somebody that's trying to do something 
with the best of intentions. It, it ultimately comes down to alignment. Yeah. Right. You have to have an alignment of values, uh, an alignment of, you know, we've, we've done stuff with, with other folks before that are high profile um, and to nobody's fault. We just didn't, it, the, the brand alignment of who they were and yeah. what they were, who they were in the world didn't necessarily line up with what it was, the, with the experience that we were creating for people. And I think that customers nowadays are very smart. They're very intelligent. They're, you were sharing, you were sharing how smart your kids, your young children <laughs> my are children in terms are, of my how, children, like, yeah. my six-year-old and four-year-old are yeah. very and, smart. And, and they people, know when they're getting advertised. People, too, people sure. can sniff out when you're full of shit, yeah. right? And you just have to give the customer all the credit in the world because there's a lot of things they could be spending their money anywhere. Um, and if, if, if for one minute they don't feel like you're authentic or the sincerity of intent is not there, um, then, you know, just you start to lose them. For you, I know there's one woman in particular that works behind the scenes yeah. to make all the magic happen. She helped us set up these interviews today, this content. Uh, she makes the story come alive yeah. on digital as well as all the other mil million things that she does. How do you feel working with your wife and how do you guys maintain balance and sanity as you do? You also are a father. Yeah. The yeah. Kid. Um, I mean, it has its, it has its ups and downs, uh, <laughs> but overall, I don't think we could ask for anyone uh, better that, that really understands what we're trying to do. Um, there's a sense of safety there knowing that this person has your best interest in mind. Yeah. Um, because again, she is speaking for the brand and she is every, she's walking through the dining rooms, touching tables, speaking to all the guests. Um, yeah. And I, I think we're very fortunate to have her, to have her around. Um, At what scale does she get some help? <laughs> <laughs> And how many so, restaurants? So, so that so I okay. So, you, so you clearly clearly had a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean we, we live in the media, the storytelling yeah. world, and I mean it goes for anybody. We, I mean we work with huge restaurant groups that have one person running social, yeah. one person that's responsible yeah. for email, the website, for brand, for storytelling, for touching mm -hmm. tables, for creating content, for making yeah. video, and it's like the bandwidth, but all of it's important. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not only is it important, but it's all changing. Yep. You know, so what we did in 2017 isn't what we're doing in 2023. Mm -hmm. How do you guys look at it through the lens of should we be on TikTok? Do we have to be on TikTok? Do we focus just on Instagram? Like, how do you guys talk about that operationally from this guy? I, I think we, you know, I think we understand what our bandwidth is and yeah. we have our goals and our the things that we want to achieve. And once we have the capacity to be able to expand on those, we have a couple of new brands that are that are going to be launching uh, later this year and next and all of those will have TikTok channels that they'll, they'll be native. Um, so I think that, you know, when you, when you start a brand, particularly a restaurant brand, uh, a lot of that love goes into launching the brand. And then you're in your, you're, you have no choice, but to play offense because you're starting things off and you're trying to get everything um, off the ground. You're trying to get everything off the ground and you're trying to teach people how to think and talk about what it is that you're doing. Um, and then, you know, you kind of fall into the, the day-to-day -day operations and you gotta yeah. do, you gotta do your best to kind of maintain that. And I think that, you know, with um, with social media has been a huge driver. We've, everything has been organic. Um, she's done a phenomenal job of telling the story and creating the content with very limited resources. Um, another thing that I think that uh, we that something that she spearheads really well is a lot of the community events that we do. We have a, a, a an event on our, at our OG Slauson location called Jamming on the Hill yeah. that brings people out, brings local musicians, mm -hmm. gives people the ability to kind of showcase their their voice and their talents. Um, and it's something that just goes a lo it goes a really long way with the community. when you're just not open from your your regular operating hours and yep. you're opening up to do other things like that. And you know a lot of that generates a lot of user generated content, which is great word of mouth is the best because it's free when a brand is as creative and as collaborative as you guys are how do you say no i think saying no is pretty easy because you can kind of go going back to the idea of when you when you have when you have a sincerity of intent around yeah. a specific mission it's a fantastic filter for like not great opportunities or people that are you know uh, looking to take advantage or kind yeah. of hop hop on the back of what it is that you're building. So, you know, pretty quickly we can look at an opportunity and we can kind of look at each other and say, this doesn't, this feels aligned with what it is that we're trying to do or it doesn't. And we can very easily say respectfully decline. I think we say a lot of times we say no more than we say yes. How big do you see this brand getting? We're going to take over the world. Taking over the world. <laughs> Dubai locations. Um, yeah, I think, I think, 
Short term, California. We want to keep it California. We want yep. to take over Southern California. It's California's the easiest yeah. state to operate. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we might I know. as well do I know. it there. Um, but I think I think uh, low hanging fruit for us is is definitely um, uh, Georgia, DC, um, East Coast. Uh, I think we're we're we we're we're gonna grow. We're gonna go pretty pretty quickly here in the next next few years. So um, yeah, but California right now it's it's California, Southern California. Do you um, think you found the right? real estate model or is it going to be flexible yeah i uh so the model that we're kind of using now so our downtown location and our inglewood location are we're calling them kind of like our flagship locations um and we want to take these larger locations um and have about three or four satellite smaller like prototype stores that are about 1500 square feet and just kind of share services and have those four stores operated by one one manager and that manager is kind of overseeing all of those locations. I mean, we want to kind of take that and um, that's how we're, we're going to introduce the brand to new, new, uh, new areas. Right. So we'll, we'll take that model and we'll do that and we'll know if it's going to work. Um, and that should, that should make it pretty easy to go into new spaces. Did you guys use toast in your sports bar? We did. When did you onboard with them? Uh, 2017, yeah. 2017. How, why did you switch? What were you on before? Uh, micros you were on micros yeah, yeah. why did you switch uh because so we started we used toast at our first hilltop location and we just loved the ecosystem like just kind of you can keep everything within that toast ecosystem so mm -hmm. we decided to just kind of take it over to parlor and and it was very easy to to translate over and um train staff and yeah i think the biggest thing for me with toast is is just you have your marketing all in there you have your you have the the costing you have scheduling um it's just it's all inclusive and it's it's great yeah when you i mean for people that listen to this they either hope to open up restaurants or in restaurants the amount of scaling that you've done through the pandemic is pretty incredible yeah. um what kind of lessons have been learned let's remove the pandemic as a variable what kind of lessons have been learned from adding locations um you know to yoni's point earlier it's just all about the team you have to yeah. you have to get people that are aligned with your vision across the table you have to constantly calibrate that vision how do you pay for the team if you don't if you need to scale but you don't have the cash flow to pay for the talent that you want it's a really good question it was a hard decision and we <laughs> we basically took the cash from opening a store to bring on the team because at once we got to about two to three stores we really understood that the, the team is going to be it's the, the most it's, important that's the most important aspect. thing that's yeah. how we're going to yeah. be able to that's going to help us hit that inflection point where we're just going to kind of take off. Um, so we made it, uh, it was a, it was a tough decision, but, um, I would say to your question about, uh, something to learn that we learned, I think it's move slowly, um, and really take your time when you're, when you're making these big decisions and not feel like the outside pressures to do things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, when, when they reopened California for COVID, we decided to keep it closed just to keep our staff safe and, and we made that decision against what everyone else was doing and it ended up being the right decision because we got shut down again and we were it, it it actually helped us in the long run because now our customers got used to ordering on third party apps and that that business has kind of stayed um consistent from covid but then we've been able to build on top of that with bringing more customers inside the space so um we turned a negative into to a positive yeah how do you look at training your team um with intention and, with intention. and yeah uh like i said once once you know you have someone uh someone good someone that's someone that's really bought into the culture someone that's going to work um that's going to work alongside you uh you got to do everything you can to make sure they feel appreciated and and that they're a part of the team what does hospitality mean when someone walks into a hilltop cafe uh, uh something that we've said from the beginning is making sure that we leave people better than we found them Right. So uh, we want any, regardless of how you walk in here, the, 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 the goal is for you to walk out in a better mood. And if that's through service, through quality of food, through the vibe, through the music, um, the little Easter eggs that keep your head up to breathe, like those are, those are all things that, again, intentionally are put in the space to make sure you walk out of here feeling better than you came in. What kind of Easter eggs are you got hiding? <laughs> the, that one right there. <laughs> So we're looking to keep your head up. It's written above the wall. When you walk into the restaurants, there's signs and they're not, they're done with intention. Yeah. They're done with meaning. 
They're not done for Instagram. They end up on Instagram, mm-hmm. but they end up on Instagram with a purpose. Mm-hmm. And they're really reminders for ourselves. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, when you're building when you're building something for yourself, and you know, you can kind of connect on a human hu- human to human level with your customers, and um, they can feel that sincerity of intent. I know that's something that we keep kind of coming back to. Every single detail is intentional, and people feel that. When you look into the future how far do you forecast are you living in today yeah i mean we i think we we we, uh we try to keep it at about two years two years yeah we try to move two years at a time when we look back on this interview in 2025 yeah we're going to look back and see what what have you accomplished uh we'll we'll definitely we'll have we'll have we'll be at at least at 15 stores 15 stores um 15 stores with so five uh, stores per year yeah we all we got that five (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we got that. 15 stores okay um we have an airport location airport location. Have a rooftop location rooftop uh any we'll other have, brands or we're all uh somerville which is somerville. The, the, what's that the supper club that we're building supper out club. on Sawson. um how big is supper club it's uh six thousand square feet you guys don't do anything small no we're not no. into bo- boutique no, stuff no, no, no. <laughs> if we're gonna do it we're going all the way go bigger go home go bigger yeah. go home fair enough uh for you both as fathers what is important for you how you live this part of your life for your son i mean i i grew up i didn't have a father my grandfather raised me and it made a profound impact because he was there for me and he Mm -hmm. invested in my education and now i'm fortunate that i have a son and i have a daughter that i get to live this life and also not work in the restaurant like i used to like when my son was born is when we started this media company Mm -hmm. and i was intentional in saying I'm going to be there. I'm going to travel with my wife to Bulgaria. For you, what are you guys doing? Because as you open up all these stores, we only have so much time. How are you going to make be intentional and know that you're going to be there for your kid? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for something Yoni does every Friday is he takes uh, his son to every single door uh, to go visit each of the stores. That's cool. um, it's re- I mean, it's really just leading by example, right? Yeah. And I think for me... Uh, I got, I learned, I might not be the smartest person in the room, but I'm going to outwork everybody. And I got that from my dad, right? My dad, my dad was a general contractor and I, I, he would force me to go to work with him on Saturdays. Um, and I'd see how hard he worked to see, I see the the blood, sweat and tears that went into everything. And I want to show that example to my son. And I think like AJ said, on, on Fridays, I bring him with me. We check on all the stores. We have a conversation about how, what we're going to do when we walk into the store, how we're going to say hi to people and, and all that. And I, it's, I think it's immeasurable. Like it's, it's, it's made such a big difference in a little four-year-old that, um, when he's older, I think it's going to really pay dividends like it did for me. Yeah. I think for me, similar to you, actually, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother and uh, my mom was an entrepreneur and I saw how, how hard she worked, um, really ran herself into the ground, to be honest, on a daily basis. And, um, I knew that that was not something that I wanted the type of fought parent I wanted to be to my children. So every Saturday I'd to walk, walk with my uh, son up to our Slauson location. He gets his acai bowl and his hot chocolate and we hang out there for a couple hours while he draws and colors and stuff and take my daughter there, um, after school to, 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 to get her, her fix as well. But I think it's just a matter of showing that anything's possible and, you know, making sure that we're kind of pushing them in there to find their own lane and to, um, you know, to be kind while they're going about their journey. So let me get this straight. When you were six years old, you were selling candy that you bought at the candy store <laughs> yeah. so that you could buy your own Jordans. I did do that. Are you going to be teaching, <laughs> you teach my son how to, oh, how wow. to pick up his own uh, Jordans? <laughs> because I heard that story and I was like, yeah. six, wow. Yeah, no, that was, uh, I mean, I, I don't think I, I, there's a lot of the things that I did as a six-year-old that I wouldn't wish on my six-year-old daughter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that it's important to share that if there's something that you want to get, you have to go out there and do whatever it is that you can within reason and the confines of the law to, to get it done. And I think that that's something that we're instilling in our children at this age and something that I wish was instilled in me from the, I mean, I think that, that, um, that example is something that is as funny as it might be in conversation. It kind of set me up for, for sure. everything, everything else that 100%. I've ever done. Yeah, absolutely. So every single week we build community virtually. It's a chance for you to come on stage. We do audio events. So one on LinkedIn, one on Clubhouse. But if you send me a message at Sean P. Walchef 
on Instagram. I'll send you the link. We want to hear about your story. If you're a creator, if you're in the hospitality space, if you're in sales marketing, we got digital hospitality leaders from all over the globe that connect. Um, it's a way to support each other. We also do shout outs. This week's shout out is to the entire marketing team at Toast. Um, thank you for this opportunity to host this show, but also please go check out Family Style. These gentlemen are grateful that this is one of our inaugural episodes of Family Style. So uh, we will put a link into that show, but thank you for helping us play the game within the game. You know, when I went to business school, I was hoping for stories and lessons of people doing real cool shit that I admired. I didn't get it, so I eventually I studied <laughs> sociology, but here I am coming full circle and I hope that, you know, you the listener, you the viewer that you learn from both of these gentlemen. You have one chance. Give me one shout out. You each get to pick one person that gets uh a shout out. Uh, usually, Tara, usually, uh, I'm usually a, the guest only gets one, but you guys are uh, two I'm, guests. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out Tara, my uh -huh. fiance. Tara, why? Because uh, of you, all the all the all the great she does for us and all the hard work that she's put in, and she needs to know that she's appreciated. She is very appreciated. Yeah, along the same lines of like just shout my wife Hope out. She's yeah. been incredible. A uh, lot of uh, motivation, a lot of inspiration. Definitely my muse. So whatever it is that I bring to the partnership, a lot of the work that she does behind the scenes to validate a lot of those ideas doesn't go unnoticed and how can people connect with you guys what's uh, the best digital <clears throat> playground yeah if you're looking for us on instagram or yeah. on across all sure. platforms uh the business is at find your hilltop um and then we're just yoni at yoni hagos and at aj fresh have you found your hilltop uh the, the the funny thing about hilltops are once you get to your destination you realize that there's just another hill to climb so we kind of operate under this idea of like there's no destinations there's only milestones so when you kind of like, and that, 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 that's what leads to a fulfilling life, right? Like you continue striving. So I think once you find your hilltop, what, what might be your hilltop today might not necessarily be the same hilltop three, six, 12 years from now. And for you, how can people connect Are uh, you on social? Yeah. Uh, at Yoni Hagos. At Yoni yeah, Hagos. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for listening. Please share it with a friend. And uh, as always, stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help. We'll catch you guys next week. I want to give a special shout out again to Toast. Thank you for believing in the power of storytelling. Thank you for empowering restaurateurs with technology that will improve their business. Please share this show. It's the only way that we grow. Share the show with another restaurant owner, with another content creator, with someone in the hospitality space that wants to level up. We love people that are playing the game within the game. The best way to connect with me is at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. Uh, that's on Instagram is the quickest way to get me, or you can find me on LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, all the platforms. We tell stories everywhere. We're weirdly available and we care about you. We care about your story. One day we'd love to feature you on digital hospitality, restaurant influencers, family style, or any of the content that we do. Please connect with us and share and subscribe. Thanks.